Some of my videos haven't been received the way I wanted for them to be. I'm to blame, but I feel that this video is the best place to clear it all up. Unity, good enough for bad games. It's a video praising the game making software Unity for being too good. As a result, it's lowered the requirements to make a game, and a lot of bad games have been made with it. So it's good enough for bad games to be a problem. But what I think happened was that a lot of you saw the video's title, assumed I was attacking Unity, and then immediately typed up a long comment arguing that it wasn't Unity's fault and is the game developers using it. Which is actually what I spend the video explaining. Some of you laughed at how ironic it was that Unity was advertised in the pre-roll ad, when it wasn't ironic at all. I admit, I was being too clever for my own good when I thought of this video's title. Two Clicks Philip was going through a phase of using clever, cryptic titles, which was then stopped when it turned out that not only did a lot of you not get the title, but you didn't even watch the video to the end. Which is a shame, because Two Clicks Philip's impression of Jim Sterling at the end was bang on. In fact, a lot of these videos that I'll be covering have my face in them at some point. I don't mind people hating my face if they dislike my videos, but I don't want to be hated just because my videos are misinterpreted. Let's move on to Two Clicks Philip's video, GeForce 1080. Can it run 1080p gaming? Well, of course it can. It's a beastly card that's better suited to 1440p or even 4K. And with hindsight, I should have just done those settings, rather than to rely on everybody knowing that the GeForce 1080 is well beyond a 1080p card. I mean, I'm not even sure what I was aiming for here. Those who don't know better will be confused by my findings, and those who know better will call me out on it and won't get that I'm in on it. I was a big fan of Digital Foundry at the time, and wanted to do a bit of a parody of them. As you can see from the logo at the beginning, and the funky guitar music in the background. I joke about 16 times anisotropic filtering being the cause of slowdown in the games, because I noticed that most games don't fully max the setting out, even at ultra settings. And then I end with Minecraft, a game that destroys frame rates with maximum draw distance on the insane game mode. Of course, this isn't a limitation with the graphics card, probably the RAM or some kind of engine limit, like how the original Operation Flashpoint still shits its pants at maximum view distance. But I still have to test it out with each new PC I own just to see if we're finally at the point where we can max out a game from 2001. I have a problem with being myself in videos, but apparently I have absolutely no problem with putting on a fake personality. The last clip from this video in particular was a favourite of mine. It took dozens of takes to perfect this awkward, innuendo crammed sequence. I hope this isn't seen as me mocking the guys at Digital Foundry. I may have replicated their hand gestures, but I feel that if I'm parodying someone else, then the least I can do is to make fun of myself more. And I certainly did in this sequence. Next is the Medieval Total War video Two Clicks Philip just released. Only because I'm proud of it, and yet it's one of the least viewed videos on the channel. I suspect the title makes it look as though it's a regular Let's Play, but it really isn't. Give it a chance if you haven't already. And once again lack of views, but the bittersweet curse of nostalgia. I can't be the only one who occasionally googles an old favourite game of mine, followed by the word nostalgia, just to see if anybody else happened to have the same experience. And even if nothing else shows up, this video is still a place for us to feel alone, together. But maybe I'm just being nostalgic. Not here, the Dell promotion video. It all made sense in my mind. I could copy the style of Top Gear. I swatted up on a number of episodes, wrote down things that could be applied to computers. You have no idea how many phrases apply to fast cars and computers. And by going mobile, I could finally have the excuse to game in bed. Sadly, I don't think the Top Gear element was clear enough. In fact, when doing it, I realised how hard it was to parody something that was already self-aware. I think I came across as a sellout. Something the Top Gear guys haven't, no matter how much praise they give to good cars. While I'm at it, I'm called a hypocrite for attacking Nvidia in my Nvidia Stop Being a Dick video, while at the same time having an Nvidia graphics card. How dare I have a product from a company that I've said something bad about at some point. But the thing is, I made a video attacking AMD's Fury branding too, and once you roll out AMD and Nvidia, there aren't many more decent graphics cards out there. I think it's a lot fairer to point out the flaws while praising the positives. And while I would have loved to have supported AMD as the underdog back in 2016, firstly they didn't have a card that could rival the speed of the GeForce 1080, and second, they didn't have an answer to Shadowplay. This is a screen recording program that Nvidia has had since 2013, and they got it right first time. No slowdown, decent file sizes, and the ability to record stuff that has already happened. It's a video maker's dream come true, and I haven't found myself wanting anything more than this. You younger people have no idea how good you've got it now. You didn't have to wrestle with Hypercam's buggy, lossy quality or Fraps's slowdown and hard drive gobbling file sizes. I was vocal about Shadowplay's superiority for years and begged AMD to come up with a solution for it. 
I even messaged people at AMD saying how important the feature was. And luckily, in late 2016, they came out with Relive. It was too late for me. I haven't tried it, but from what I've heard, it's just as good as Shadowplay. You'll hear AMD owners insisting that it's better, but I'm pretty sure they were the ones who previously insisted that Play.TV was already good enough. As far as I'm concerned, both companies are now fine for capturing clips with. The dangers of quicksand. If you don't know what this is, it's my most viewed video on this channel. By far. I didn't intend for it to be. It's what happens when a small vlog attracts the internet. People get angry because they click on it expecting for it to be something that it isn't. I mean, I don't know what I could have done about it. It's the downside of making a popular YouTube video, I guess. Amusingly, Two Clicks Philip made a video warning about this kind of thing happening. He called it the Dangers of Quicksand Videos, and it too became wildly more popular than it should have done. What a sellout. That one was a bit more intentional. The original video wasn't, though. I didn't try to clickbait. But it still got me hate and death threats from people coming from outside my channel. I was even accused of sounding like Frankie. Speaking of which, legend has it that Frankie on PC once cheated in CSGO. He claimed his mouse let him bunny hop. Three Clicks Philip happened to have that mouse and showed that it wasn't capable. Frankie made another video saying that he was being bullied and suddenly Three Clicks Philip's channel was getting downvoted, flagged and destroyed left, right and centre. Three Clicks Philip had no choice but to apologise whilst eating pineapple. Both sides were happy. But now I get messages from my fans saying that I'm very mature for apologising to Frankie and for admitting that I was wrong. It turns out that, as time has gone on, history has been rewritten where I was wrong in this incident and poor innocent Frankie was the victim. You know what? I don't mind apologising for any of the things I've covered in this video, but I'm not accepting that by apologising in this instance, I was admitting it was all my fault. How can I put it? He cheated, I did my usual sort of video, he didn't like being called out on it and used his size to crush me. I apologised because it was the mature thing to do, to put the argument at rest and to save my channel from being destroyed by his rabid fanbase. But it was at that moment that I realised that, in social media, apologising is seen as weakness. All the while, Frankie has never confessed to doing anything wrong, so he's seen as an angelic saint. It's a dangerous precedent to set. No matter what you do, as long as you deny it, people will take your side. It encourages stubborn, manipulative leaders and punishes those who do the right thing. Imagine if this happened in politics. I accept responsibility for a lot of the misunderstood videos I've covered in this video, but in this case, some of the blame has to lie with the audience for allowing this sort of injustice to happen, because otherwise it's just down to me and Frankie, and if Frankie's unreasonable, then this system means that I lose by default, unless I sink to his level. Even if you're a fan of Frankie, you can't just take his side for the sake of YouTube drama or out of blind fanboyism. You have to see that he's wrong in this case, even though he never owned up to anything. It's hard to do, I understand. I don't even care that he cheated. I was just doing my job, as part of the CSGO community, to point out that it wasn't his mouse that caused it. I only care about his response to the situation. In his response video, he said that it wasn't the mouse and it was a custom server, which then somehow immediately made me wrong for testing the mouse in retrospect. When his mistakes and future corrections are held against you, you know you've already lost since Frankie already has control of the audience's hearts and minds. I will happily post a correction where I'm wrong. That's a given. But opinions are more difficult. For those, I'll try to argue my side in a video like this, but it's up to you whether you agree or not. So with all that said, I'm happy that my videos are sometimes misunderstood. I'd rather that you guys disagreed with me than for you to blindly take my side just because I'm me. I want for my fanbase to be better than Frankie's. And if that means that you guys disagree with me, then it's a small price to pay.